Good evening, friends. Good evening. Good evening. Let me take a minute to explain what this play is all about. Everybody have heard of uh, Edmund Hillary? Yes. Sir. And Tenzing Norgay? Yes. Sir. The Mountaineers? Yes. Sir. Yes. It's such a coincidence that today I have to choose this. I didn't choose this because it's 29th of May. I didn't choose this because it is believed to achieve. But both Hillary and Edmund were completely there to achieve. And friends, they started trekking from the base camp for the first time in their lives, Mount Everest, on the 2nd of May, 1953. And on 29th May, at 11.30 a.m., they scaled Mount Everest. What a coincidence. I have to give this today, 29th of May. <laughs> so I, any mountain climber, adventurer, or anybody as an author, those days everybody used to record it. You didn't have anything to record as far as the camera is concerned or whatever. So they used to write a diary. So this entire excerpt is from Sir Edmund Hillary's diary. He has written out a diary as to what all happened, conversation, and what happened in the entire expedition. And obviously there are a couple of characters which don't appear except Tenzing Norgay a couple of times. And he keeps calling for people like Charles and Norgay or whatever, whatever, and they respond, which is not actually said here. It's only a response by Hillary, which I'm going to read out to you. When I sit down here, it means that I'm sitting down and making my notes after the terrible day that I've had trekking. Or a great day that I've had trekking and scaled 2,000 feet in three days. That's about it. Okay? So the day starts May 2nd, 1953. Edmund Percival Hillary, a Kiwi mountaineer, is set to climb Mount Everest. Oh. May 2nd, May 2nd, 1953. The grandeur of this place is impossible to put into words. How am I going to write it? As I gaze out at the impenetrable whiteness of the mountain beyond our day's camp, I reflect upon life's fragility. How easy it is to candle out a light. No, not just the life. <coughs> to candle our life out, being snuffed out. These crags are so vast and so white. Mm. Ivory white. The ivory snow blinds the eye as it struggles to distinguish between the sun's glare from the cool white ivory. Mm. How am I supposed to explain this? Hey, what a camera! Tenzing, bring my thesaurus with you. Bloody mountains. <laughs> How many bloody synonyms can I find for white before this starts getting old? Come on, how long does it take to fit out my project? I packed the largest edition the store had so that it'd be easy to find the word. Well, I told you. Yeah, not to tender it to the damn yaks. You're supposed to carry it in your backpack and give it to me when I access. Oh, I'm going my diary, damn it. Don't stand with the bloody dinner. Phew, thank you. Okay. Mm, white, 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 white. Where is this white? White. Not white. Uh, frosted. Mm, alabaster. Ashen white. Uh, blanched snows. Uh, pearly white, yeah, pearly white sounds good. The eye struggles to distinguish between the glare of the sun and the cool pearly. No, but it doesn't work. With snow, you bugger. Say, John, let's finish up this conversation we had about the bees, okay? Uh, why? Because I'm an apiarist? <laughs> ah, you knew that, but you would rather jump to traverse. That sounds suicidal. Really, too? Oh, no. You're a smart move you want to make, your expedition leader. Charles, oh, yeah, man, oh, yeah. This is it, but actually I'm a murderer, not a warder. Look, Charlie, you know what's going on around here, okay? So we are going around this damn mountain, right? What do you mean? 
We are going to scale up these ice walls with these yaks? Ha! Huh. Just to summit and not the other side? What's the bloody point of mountaineering then? Ah, well, I'm going to have a word with this wretched Sherpa. Tenzin! Hey, you Tenzin! Jerry Norge! Why is Charles saying we're going up the mountain, not around it? Why? There and back? Why would we want to go up there and back? Is this a shopping trip? Am I going to pick up some, some frying pan up from there? Shut you jets. Oh, no, no, don't tell me that I can't understand a bit of that. Well, maybe you need to work on your bloody accent. That's why I signed up. Tom and 
Charles have turned back and they discovered I replaced their oxygen tank with my rocket. They were angry, affronted, cross, displeased, angry, fuming, fierce, furious, incensed, mad, and outraged, resentful, and wrathful. What the bloody hell I care about that? They call me something synonymous to mute with misbegotten, and I assure them I would be highly qualified to capture the full breadth of their emotions in writing. Not to worry, Kenzie. I will still let it. Without you, or maybe with you. We are nearing the summit. I can barely breathe. Where are the scaling? Give me those. Give me the last gear. Give me the oxygen. Tenzi, come on, give me the oxygen. <sighs> Thank you, Tenzi. While you're there, I find the perfect words to describe the view from the top. Can you get my back ready, please? Super, super. Oh, a dozen feet to climb and we'll be there. This is it. This is it, Tenzi. The moment I was waiting for. I scaled it. Hey, I did it. The first man to summit Everest. Suck it. Suck it, Norge. Suck the oxygen, buddy. The silver medal is still bloody, bloody impressive for you. You will surely go down in history in Nepal. Look at this panoramic view, which is pure beauty, Tenzi. These jagged peaks look like rows of celestial tree clouds like Jesus solidified breath. The assumed expanse of the sky in valleys below the expanse of his no. And never use expanse. Oh, why do you say Tenzi? Pass me the thesaurus, will you? What do you mean you switched them for the exhaustion tank? How am I supposed to get the perfect point? Oh my god. Thank you.